When building your home golf simulator, actually filming and recording your golf swing may be one of the most important things you want to do in your simulator. So I have been looking into the best way to do that between the type of cameras to get and software to use. I have started reviewing several different swing camera sets. And of course, I was gonna check out the swing camera set from Carl's Place because so much of the stuff in my simulator comes from Carl's Place. I've been using the Carl's Place swing cameras for the last several weeks and just wanted to share what I found. So when it comes to swing cameras typically used in a golf simulator, they can range from free on your cell phone that you already have to over $1,000 per camera. So there's a pretty wide range and these Carl's Place cameras fall on the lower end of that range. They are sold as a set at about $450, about $225 per camera. It may be a great option if you're looking to have dedicated cameras that are wired in by USB rather than just your cell phone. That's kind of the case that I'm in. So what's in the box? Like I said, they're sold as a set. So you've got two swing cameras. They come with uh, little plastic lens caps. I was particularly worried about the USB cord situation and how long of a cord I would need. They have 10 foot USB cords that are actually attached to the back. So you're not going to pull the cord out of the camera itself. But what I think you definitely will need are USB extension cords. I bought two of those from Amazon, but you can actually buy them direct from Carl's Place on the same page as the camera page that you just add them on. I think pretty much in any situation, if you're working with a golf simulator, you're gonna need probably two of those, one for each camera, depending on the length and how far away they are. Now, these cameras come with 2.5 millimeter wide angle lenses on them so that you can get them pretty close to you, but there is an option to add a adjustable zoom lens from Carl's Place. You can add that on if you would like, and that would allow you to kind of put the cameras farther away from you and adjust it to where it is fitting your silhouette, if you will, right over your hitting strip how you want it. For me, I'm in my garage, space is limited, and so I wanted these as close as possible to me. I did not get that adjustable zoom lens. Just know that that will give you some extra options if you need to mount it farther away, especially if it's like on a wall or something like that that is farther back. Personally, I would love to do that, but like I said, I'm in the garage, so I am using tripods. I am using the tripods from Carl's Place. I found them to be okay, but these cameras mount just like any other with a a quarter inch screw so any tripod you use will have that you can pick one up on Amazon or you can just buy the whole package like I did and get the tripods from Carl's place now one weird observation that I noticed is that for whatever reason I had to kind of point the camera down if you can see kind of how that is there at a downward angle towards the floor, whenever I pointed what I thought was level, just kind of straight forward, it actually picked up a whole lot more of the ceiling than it did below it. So both of the cameras did that. I actually asked Carl's Place about it and they just said, you know, that's typical and uh, you're just gonna have to adjust the tripod mount to point it wherever you need it. So I thought it was a little bit strange, but obviously it doesn't affect anything because you can just point it where you need it. Now, these cameras are truly plug and play. You literally just plug it into your computer and whatever software you wanna use will be able to recognize it as a uh, USB camera. They do have three different settings though. You have an option between 60 frames per second at 1080p resolution, 120 frames per second, at 720p resolution or 300 frames per second at 360p resolution. I found that the 120 frames per second at 720 was the best to use. 60 frames per second really isn't great for slow motion in a golf swing and the 300 frames per second really was pretty dark and got a lot of screen flickering from my projector that was just distracting. So I did not think it was worth using that, but I will show you examples of those when we get into the software next. I've got Foresight's FSX 2020 loaded up using my GC Quad. I've got the cameras connected and I'm just gonna show you the different resolutions. So right now I'm already set up with the 1080p at 60 frames per second. I'll hit a shot and we will take a look. Okay. So here's our automatic replay. 
and that was at half speed. So if we go to quarter speed, there you go. That's the 1080p at 60 frames per second. Now I'm gonna go back and change to the 120 frames per second at 720p. Now the cool thing is that in FSX 2020, you can just go in and change these resolutions right in the software and also adjust the properties as well. So we'll change this, you see the three settings. We'll go to the 720 and you can see I've got 120 frames per second there. And if I wanted to, I could hit the properties and come in here and adjust the brightness, contrast, etc. I'm gonna leave them all on the uh, default. There we go, let's hit another shot. No good ones today. So there we go, you can see the image is just a little bit darker. Um, and again, that was on half speed. Let's go back, change it to the quarter speed. And that's a pretty good smooth image. And what I like to do in this software is uh, just go and move it kind of frame by frame. You can do this and just tap it each frame. Of course, you see, you do see the, the blur uh, on the club head and I'll let it play through one more time. Again, this is at quarter speed. Okay, let's go back in and change it to that uh, 300 frames per second at 360p. And you can see it's very dark. And for whatever reason, I'm not able to get the full 300 frames per second in FSX 2020. You see down there where it says measured frame rate in red, that shows what you're actually getting. I don't know why that is. It might just be a limitation of FSX 2020, but nonetheless, looks like we're getting about 189. You can come in here and adjust the brightness. Um, I'll turn that up pretty far just so that we can see something. We'll leave it there. Um, and you can see that we're getting all of that screen flickering from my projector. That's just because the refresh rate of the projector does not really match the frame rate of the camera. So you get all that flickering. Of course, we're not trying to record the screen. We're trying to record the golf swing, but it is a little bit distracting. Let's just hit one. Okay. And here's our video at half speed. And we'll try and replay it again at quarter speed. And we can just look at it as I'm clicking along frame by frame. You can see there's a lot more frames, but still pretty blurry to try and see the club head. As you can see, I landed on the 120 frames per second. I think that's just the right amount to be able to see what you're doing the best. As you can see, they work fine in FSX 2020 and they also work in FSX Play. We'll load that up real quick just to show you, but obviously it's about the same thing. So let's do that real quick. Okay, we're in FSX Play now. Their most recent update now allows for swing cameras. In order to configure it, it's just in settings. And then down here, swing camera, and you've got to have an active camera turned on and then you would select from the list uh, the camera that you want. So got it running here. We are on the uh, Foresight driving range. We'll just hit a shot. Got the pulls today, hooks almost. Okay. Unlike FSX 2020, Nothing can be set to just pop up. So you have to go into and click analysis and then click uh, on video. And there's your video. Your options for speed are half 1X or 2X, no quarter speed. Not sure what they're thinking there, but we set it to half speed and click play. 
there's your replay that you can watch. Now, obviously, that is the 300 frame per second setting. There is not a way to change the different settings like I just did in FSX 2020, so it defaults to this 300 frames per second setting. That's what you get if you're planning to use it in FSX Play. Now let's switch over to Unicore View. We're in Unicore View. I've got my Unicore iMini set up and want to show you how these cameras work in this software and also talk about the distance from me that I've got them set up on. So I haven't changed them at all yet. Everything you've seen has been with my down the line camera at seven feet, basically from the ball. It's not in line with the ball, it's more in line with my hands, but it's at seven feet basically from the ball. We've got that in Unicore view now. And as you can see, it's easy to have both cameras on the screen at the same time, which is really nice. Just real quick, I'll show you that yes, you can go into the settings and you can switch between the three different settings that we talked about. Um, I've got them both on 120 frames per second and uh, they look very nice here. So I'm just going to hit a shot. My down the line camera is at seven feet from the ball and my face on camera is actually at five feet from the ball. And uh, then we will move them again. Okay. And you can see the replay there. I've got a seven iron in my hand. I just wanted to point out that because it's fitting both of these cameras on the same screen, they are clipped. So you can only see basically the middle of the picture. What you saw with the Foresight software, you were seeing the whole picture and here you're just seeing the middle of it. If I were to take my driver without moving the cameras and set up to the ball here, and then just swing back. Yeah, you can almost miss my hands. You can't see the club at all in that down the line camera. Of course, the camera can see the whole thing, but because the view software clips it, you'd have to move it back. Just to show you, I'm gonna move this back to nine feet. Just move it straight back. There we go. And I'll take this face on camera and move it from five to six feet. Just a little bit more. Just to give you a little bit of a reference for where you might need to place yours if you're using this view software. Here's my driver going back. Now you can see my hands. And again, that's that two and a half millimeter fixed wide angle lens. Now, another thing that's easy to demonstrate in this view software is the lighting. Right now I've got two fluorescent lights above me in my garage. Plus I've got track lighting uh, above my hitting area, lighting everything up. The more lighting you have on, the better it is for recording in slow motion. But I prefer to turn it off so that everything looks better on my projector. I'll just turn some lights off and you can see the difference. Okay, so this is the lighting that I would typically use uh, whenever I'm playing in here. And I've turned off the fluorescent lights and I've just got a single bulb light turned on over here to this side that's on my garage door opener. And then I've got the track lighting above my hitting strip. You can see it's a lot darker, but what I can do is go into the window settings and turn up the brightness. This is by default, just where they're at. We'll just hit a shot. So it's a little bit dark. Um, I can go into the window settings, like I said, go into manage cameras, and you can see these are the two of them right here, HD USB camera. Not sure why the preview isn't loading, but I can just turn the brightness up. See, that's a little bit better for that one. This one's not too bad already. That looks pretty good there. So you can play with the brightness and get it to where you like it. Whoa. Okay guys, one other thing to mention is that if you're going to be using these cameras with the Unicore software, just keep in mind that not all of the features are going to work with them. Things like the upcoming AI trainer are going to require the swing optics cameras themselves from Unicore. Obviously you can film your swing, but just keep in mind that Unicore has a lot of things specific to their own cameras that might not work 
with these. If you're taking a look at these on the Carl's Place website, they talk about the Kenovia software, and that's basically just free software that you can use to set up and record your swing. That wasn't something that I was interested in because I was looking for something to use with launch monitor software that would combine the data and the recording. So I did not bother with that but that is an option if you wanna use that software as well. So overall, as you can see, they work fine with different software and they may be a good option for you if you're just looking for some dedicated cameras to set up in your home simulator that won't break the bank. I'll put a link directly to these cameras down in the video description. And as always, if you use that link, it will help support this channel and help bring better reviews your way. And uh, leave me a comment down below or shoot me an email. Happy to help with anything and see you in the next one. Thanks.